Now, uh, I'm curious about this. Have you ever had any uh, memorable responses in reference to your work? Something that sticks with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the piece that you had at ESSA last year, and I don't know if you remember it, but all of the staff were like, oh, we want to buy it, we want to buy it. It had, was, it had some um, male and female anatomy. Oh, yes. Uh, the, well, I called it the sex pot. I loved yeah. that piece. <laughs> uh, yes, and, and uh, um, that one's got a, a, a lot of, everyone loves it, but for some reason, it's been out there for years. And it has recently sold, though. So. <laughs> yep, I heard. Uh, yeah, it was fun to make, and, uh, um, and it did get a lot of comments. Yeah. Um, I would say the best response that I've ever had on a piece is, I think it was, I had a, a show at Crystal, not, it, it was a one day show at Crystal Bridges. And, uh, and, and it was just a, the artwork that was for something or another. And um, there was, I guess, a three or four year old little boy and he walks up to the sculpture that he was looking at and he does this little, <laughs> he looks at it, and then he's like, and then he sort of goes, and, he, and then he goes on to the next piece. Oh. And he, he did this little, little dance almost. And, and, and I was thinking, gee, you know, um, and, and I do that sometimes when I look at other art, I, I look for, oh, how does that physically, how, does, how physically does my body want to respond to that? Yeah. Every 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 good piece of art should have a have a dance associated with it. Oh, I second um. that. <laughs> it would it would make uh, art gallery so much more interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they are interesting, but just you know, just envisioning yeah. uh, really responding to it in a physical way. I think yeah, that would be people great. would jump up and down when they saw art. Yes. Yes. I love it. I see an interactive show brewing. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. So uh, I I think I know the, the answer to this question, but I may not. Um, what typically inspires you to create a piece? Well, like I said, with the found object, it's usually the objects them, themselves that start the creativity. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll find something. Uh, I know there's a, oh, I can't think of the name for it. When you see faces in, in inanimate objects, there's a, a name for that. But uh, um, I often see faces. I, you know, I, I do a lot of bugs and flowers. And uh, um, I would think that it, it is the object itself that starts the creativity. And then it's up to my mind to, to come up with more stuff from that. Yeah. And a lot of times the script, uh, a piece of a sculpture will sit around here, some of them for five, 10 years, and they will be two or three pieces, like the COVID piece that I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Those two pieces that make the main piece of the, sat together on a bench for probably five years mm -hmm. and I knew they would become something. Yeah. I did not know what. Yeah. And it's almost like, a, I know Carl Jung uh, uh, talks about alchemy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sort of putting things in a jar and letting them see if they'll become gold, you know, mm -hmm. and then putting things together. And so in a lot of, there's a lot of alchemy in this shop is in that there are little things that are set out everywhere that are, that are just waiting for the right piece to come along and join them or for me to look at it from a different angle. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope I get to come and visit this, this studio of yours sometime because I think Oh, you should, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping okay. I can do, if we ever get out of this COVID thing, uh, um, and I'm still alive, I guess, <laughs> um, uh, to do an, an, another open uh, uh, gallery or an open oh, studio. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be wonderful. I will look forward to that. Um, you know, when you're when you're in the art world, you know, some people 
you know, people are in it for all sorts of different reasons. Um, when it when it comes to you, what does being a successful artist mean to you? You know, I thought about this when I was uh, reviewing the questions that you might ask, mm -hmm. and uh, I used to joke that my goal is to sell one piece of sculpture to Crystal Bridges for a million dollars and then retire and give away art. Yeah. And then yeah. just make art and give it to anyone that I feel needs it. Yeah. I'd love to do that. Would, that would be success for me. That would be a true be able to give away art. Yeah. You know. Well, I hope somebody from Crystal Bridges sees this. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, someone, someone with a checkbook from Crystal Bridges. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you never know. You never, you never know. know. Yeah, it could happen. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, and and that might this that might lead into this this question. Uh, what is your do you have a dream project, or is that I it? Do yes, yes, I do have a dream project, and I've even worked towards it, and then it got. Uh, it, it just didn't, it fell apart towards the end and it never did um, come to fruition. But um, I, I've been making lightning bugs for years and I make all sorts of lightning bugs and they're all different. Mm -hmm. And they're made out of uh, uh, oxygen tanks and most of them have either a, a vapor tight, like a freezer, walk-in freezer light on the back of it or sometimes I... I have one with an airport taxiway light sometimes. <laughs> and uh, there's a couple of these that hang in downtown Rogers that are public art. And uh, I would love to, um, I, I, I tried this in, in Rogers and it just didn't go through uh, to, to put lightning bugs all over, uh -huh. all over the city of Rogers and just have them light up and people could take selfies with them and post them to a website and everything. And I even happen to own the uh, the domain name uh, Lightning Bug City. If I ever ah. did, so, I would have a a domain for if I ever did get that project to happen, you know. And so, uh, you know, I probably need to go and sell that to a couple of different cities and see if any of them are interested in that. It would just be fun. Oh, know? it would be so much fun! It would be phenomenal, and I hope it comes to fruition. I'm a huge fan of. You call them, <clears throat> excuse me, you call them lightning bugs, but from where, I, where I'm from, which is Minnesota, we call them fireflies. I know, isn't that interesting? <laughs> it is. <laughs> the fireflies, lightning bugs, whatever it is, I think it sounds beautiful, and I hope that it happens because, oh, I mean, you know, the magic of fireflies in the summertime, it, it, we all turn into little kids, don't we, when we see them? I mean, we do, yeah. Um, uh, I saw, you know, being making uh, sculptures of bugs, I even buy bug books every once in a while. Yeah. And I bought a bug book that had uh, like this chart that had, you know, okay, um, you know, what type of bug this was, what they did, and you know, like this. And then one of the columns said purpose. Mm. And for purpose, in lightning bug, and I, I, I thought this was the most amazing thing. It said for the lightning bug, the purpose was to bring wonder into the world. Oh, I love um, that. Yeah, I do, I do too. They do. They, it's, there's a magic in, in fireflies. And yeah. I found myself writing the other day that the things I will miss most when I die are clouds, um, uh, um, rolling thunder, and lightning bugs uh, on an evening. Mm, yeah. I concur. I concur. Okay, well, I hope that that happens because there needs to be more wonder in the world, don't you think? We do, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so, oh, here, this, this is a fun one. Uh, if you could have any superpower in the world, Tom, what would it be? Uh, uh, my superpower. Oh, <laughs> I, my first reaction would be, I wish I could just take my hand and and be able to melt metal with it and bend it and you know and, and adjust it just a little you know oh. you know rather than that, the whole thing of heating it up and bending it and then you know uh and, and you know to be able to do that with my hands you know but the other one when i think 
on, on a more deeper spiritual level is, as I said earlier, I'm starting to get to this point where in my dreams and everything, there's a fear of death. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I get, I think I would love to have the superpower of, of knowing I'm just going to live another 30 years. I could do this for another, you know, forever. Yeah. I'm having a good time. <laughs> Well, I just keep doing it. Just just keep keep doing what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's see. Um is there one thing in life that you just absolutely cannot imagine living without? No, I, you know, I don't think so. I, I there's one of the things I guess um, it, the rule of St. Benedict uh, talks about being satisfied. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for me, there's nothing I can't do without. There are things that I would miss if I, they weren't in my life anymore. You know, people that I would miss if they weren't in my life. Sure. There is also in my life, I'm not looking to be a millionaire or a superstar or a, you know, uh, I have a good sense of what's good enough. And, you know, and sometimes I have to look at a piece of artwork and say, oh, well, that's good enough. You know, you know, it, I, I, you know, that in order to maintain my happiness, I guess, you know, if I'm going to stay the happy man, sometimes I have to be satisfied with where I'm at. Right. <laughs> Right. And I, th I think that's one of those things as you, as you grow older and you know, you just are living life. It's one of those things, one of those lessons that you learn about what's important and what's not, what isn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. one, of, mm -hmm. one of the things about getting older, I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, what I like about it now is that there's a whole section of my mind that's not thinking of sex all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you get a lot more yeah. done, huh? This is, yeah, I have this whole section that's, that's yeah. free to do other things now. It's freed <laughs> up. Yeah, right on, man. <laughs> uh, I just I just adore you, Tom Flynn. Oh, thank you. I adore you. Golly. Thank <laughs> okay. you much. Uh, so, do you have a favorite artist or a favorite piece of art out there somewhere in the world? Oh, I... If I was to choose a favorite piece of my art, and I'd have to find it, um, a picture of it somewhere, I don't know if you have anything right now, it would be the, the spiritual nun on the, on the scooter. Uh. And it's just, it's one of those things, it was, it was a small piece, only, you know, um, uh, and it was just, uh, let's see, it was a, a bath, a, a old clawfoot bathtub, uh, uh, a leg, and then a, a a plow piece, and then this other old like sample tiny plow piece, and it made this nun on a scooter. Oh my gosh! And it, it there will never be another one because you'd never find another piece of paper or another another, but a lot of those parts they just happened to look that way they had rusted into that form and so you know um and those are the, the ones that I love that would be my favorite sculpture now then my favorite sculpture by someone else mm -hmm. is in Dallas Texas at the at the museum uh, art museum in Dallas and it is three huge pieces of I believe a ship hull that are about 30 foot high and maybe 10, 12 foot wide. And they're stuck in the ground and they curl up in this thing like this. And you can walk in between them. There's like about a foot in between each one. And when you walk in, the noise changes, you know, because you're in this enclosed space. So the, the, the echoes are very strange. Plus if you bang on the metal, it just made amazing sounds. I just, I don't know. I just really love that piece. I wonder. I think because it's interactive. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it's there. I happen to be in the Dallas area, so I might have to check it out if they're open. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's still there or not. I haven't seen it in a couple of years now, so. Yeah. Well, it sounds amazing. 
So now I'm at a point where I'm not going to ask you any more questions, but I'm hoping you're going to show us some art. I will do my best. I'll see what I can do to make okay. this look. Um, uh, oh, somehow. Let's see here. I know. All right. Okay. Let me see here. You there? Yeah. Oh, I lost you. Yep. Come back to us, Tom. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> If I close this door, I'll get a better view here. Okay. This here yeah, is the COVID piece. Ooh. And if you see, it's got a ring that is made out of a brush hog and then a farm implement that's sort of hanging in that ring by a hand. Yeah. And it has two eyes, but one eye is in the hand and the other is in the head. And it just has all this symbolism. There's a head, mm. head within a head, within a head, breathing tube. The hand is just barely holding on to the metal. And yeah. they did two separate pieces so that will swing a little bit. So that was a piece. Those are the two that I said they uh, hung or they sat together on a bench for probably five years before I did this. Uh -huh. So, and then another one here. Oh, it again. It's all right. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. That's a ring. Yeah. Of metal. I see it. And in the middle are two hand shaped diggers. Uh -huh. that, uh, um, are holding a Civil War um, era cannonball. Oh. And I was what wondering I've, what that was. Oh, and on the base, it's on the base is a differential. Mm -hmm. And I like that um, one hand is red and one hand is blue. Yeah. And so together, the red and the blue, you know, Democrat and Republican, they have to work together to hold that uh, the Civil War, the, that, that uh, uh, human rights into the middle of the circle. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I just, I think there's a lot of symbolism there. Yes. And it, uh, the, that does um, come apart. And so, you know, it, it is held together by the weight of the, the cannonball. Okay. And does that piece have a title? So let's see, what else do I have here? My latest one is this little guy, and I call him a Kachina doll because I'm being, you know, partially from New Mexico. I'm not sure. Can you see that? Yeah. There. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what the pieces, oftentimes, I, like, I, like with the cannonball piece, I knew what the pieces are. A lot of these pieces, I don't know what they are on this one. Yeah. They're just found objects. Yeah. Yeah, so. I see lots of things. It, it, it almost then looks like a bird. And pieces over. <laughs> oh, the, the, oh, the bird, yeah. Yeah. That is a, let's see. But there, that is a, uh, a phoenix bird. Love and that is made from a rock rake and a couple of pliers. Uh, and his, like his claws, I don't know if you can see his claws there, are made out of uh, um, horseshoe nails. Oh, uh, I love that. And, uh, you know, the phoenix rises from the, the grave or from death. Mm -hmm. So I found it interesting that this one happens to be mounted on a die. <laughs> oh, okay. the iron. This is a dancing daffodil. Ooh. My back, you see it? And it's mounted on a spring. So it will. Ah. And that would blow in the wind. Wonderful. And uh, one of the th nice things. 
think about this one is it's got a secret compartment in it. <laughs> I love secret compartments. Okay, well that's yeah, uh -huh, that was fun. Oops, lost you again. Hang on. Okay. There we are. <laughs> I know. Technology. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hang in there. Okay, yeah. Well, well, those, so the pieces that you have completed, where, where are they destined to go, Tom? Right now, I actually, I just started a Facebook uh, artist site, and all of these are for sale on it for a couple months before I put them in, in a gallery. Okay, good. And Being an old, an old guy and uh, also having COP. I'm, I'm trying not to go out, and right. so I'm not putting stuff in galleries right now. Yeah. A lot of galleries aren't even right. So, so Facebook. If you go to my Facebook page, Tom Flynn, uh, uh, found object metal sculptor. They're on there okay. with the prices. Okay, great. Well, we will we will direct people to take a look at what you're what you're up to, and I know it is getting hot in your studio. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go so you can go gla grab a glass of cold lemonade or iced tea or whatever you, okay. whatever is your thing. But, um, this has been a lot of fun, uh, and I really, really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, let us get to know you better and, and see your studio and your pieces, and, uh, we cannot wait well, to well, have you back you, on the campus. I really appreciate it, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and I will, uh, and I'm a, I, I'm hoping to, I can teach again in, in, at ESSA, what yeah. I do for my class, I'll put as much of this stuff as I can carry to my truck, Right. In the back of my truck, and then I just, uh, I tell the students, okay, make things, and you know. It's like Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you have a great day, Tom, and uh, we will see you around. Okay, thank you, Hilda. All right, thanks, Tom.